Hello everyone and welcome to the finals of the 1971 candidate series. It's uh, Tigran Petrosian versus Bobby Fischer. Uh, it's round four and uh, well if you've been with us so far you know that game one went to Fischer. Uh, Petrosian got into some serious time trouble after having uh, the better game for the entire game but he couldn't reach uh, time control and uh, he resigned the move. Uh, he resigned the game on move 40. Uh, then uh, in game two uh, Fischer tried the Grunfeld defense against Petrosian and Petrosian achieved a, a brilliant brilliant uh, victory. Victory, uh, ending Fisher's winning streak. Then game three again. Uh, Petrosen was much better uh, in his in his fr French defense, and Fisher tried sacrificing a pawn, but it didn't really work out. So later, Fisher was the one who had to uh, fight for a draw. But in the end. Uh, the game was drawn. So although uh, the result at the moment is uh, one and a half each, but it could have easily been three to zero for Tigran Petrosian. Uh, this is game four, and uh, during. Uh, well, some sometimes before game four, or maybe even during game three, uh, Fisher caught a cold, and he was really cranky about everything. He refused to give interviews. He refused to uh, have his photo taken. As you can see, there's a quote above the board from the hotel manager uh, saying how Fisher was uh, constantly changing his hotel rooms, uh, that he couldn't sleep due to traffic. Uh, but this is nothing out of the ordinary. Fisher often had uh, ma many de demands. So uh, that being said, uh, let's uh, focus on game four and it's very interesting and uh, Fisher really shows us how to prepare for a game when you're not really feeling all that well, perhaps even when you have a cold and uh, you, of, of course you will not have uh, enough stamina to uh, perhaps play the game for six or seven hours. So it's very interesting uh, how <laughs> Fisher decided to uh, handle this game and uh, how he deals with uh, another game where Petrosen has the white pieces. So as you've seen in game two, uh, Fischer played the Grunfeld defense. Here uh, Petrosen opens with c4. Uh, we have c5 and knight to f3. Uh, so so far the English opening, g6 and now d4. c captures on d4, knight captures on d4, knight to c6 and here Fischer allows e4. Uh, the game now transposes into uh, the accelerated dragon variation of the Sicilian. So uh, we will not see a repeating of the Grunfeld defense and the Fisher will not uh, be showing us what uh, he prepared as of course he did prepare something. Uh, but okay, knight to f6, knight to c3 and d6. Uh, we have f3, knight captures on d4, queen captures on d4 and bishop to g7. Uh, bishop to e3, we have castles, queen back to d2 and now comes queen to a5. And here a very interesting moment. Um, well, uh, Fisher often said that he uh, doesn't enjoy playing the uh, dragon variation of the Sicilian because the white can always go for the Yugoslav attack, simply push g4, h4 uh, and crush black. Uh, but here as uh, Petrosan already has c4 on the board as the game started off as an English and then transposed into the Sicilian, uh, there's already a c4 at the board, this uh, Marozzi bind uh, setup. And uh, it's not all that uh, impressive to, to play uh, the Yugoslav attack <clears throat> uh, while having c4 on the board uh, because uh, it's not all that uh, likely you will be able to castle queenside. Uh, for example, if you castle queenside here, then black can simply continue developing bishop e6, king b1, uh, and after let's say rook f to c8, now there's a double attack against your c4 pawn. And here uh, you would have to go something like knight d5, and here the queens uh, would simply get traded off. Uh, on the other hand, if you try something like b3, this isn't possible due to this knight to g4 move. Uh, now there's a double attack against your uh, knight on c3 here and here you would have to move the knight and black would once again be able to exchange here. For example, queen captures, knight captures with check. Uh, now this move is playable because after king attacks it you can simply capture queen and after king captures knight, now f captures on g4. Bishop captures attacking the rook, rook moves and uh, here you have a position where the material on the board is completely equal. Uh, two bishops each, two rooks each, six pawns each. Uh, and three pawn islands each, so uh, a completely equal equal position. So not something you want to do uh, if you're hoping to create some sort of a kingside attack against the black king. So here instead Petrosian goes rook to c1. Uh, and okay, we have bishop to e6 and now comes b3. b3 is now playable because now knight to g4 is pretty much useless. The rook is also now protecting the knight here. So okay, rook a to c8 by Fisher. Uh, we have bishop to e2 and now comes a6. Uh, we have knight to d5, now offering a trade of queens, and okay, uh, queen captures, king captures, and now comes knight captures on d5. c captures on d5, uh, bishop to d7, and now rook captures on c8. Rook captures on c8, and rook to c1. Uh, here you can see that pretty much everything is traded off. Rook captures, king captures, and now king to f8. 
King to c2 was played by Petrosian and after uh, Fisher played e6, uh, it was in this position on move 20 uh, that uh, they agreed to a draw. So uh, a very quick uh, game 4 from the match Fisher petrosian but uh, the most interesting thing about this whole game is that it was already played. Uh, it was played in 1969 between uh, Spassky and Petrosian uh, during their uh, World Chess Championship uh, match and uh, the game did continue. Here a4 was played and the game continued for some 20 more moves but uh, Petrosian doesn't uh, wanna push uh, for more than he needs here against Fischer as you know the match is uh, currently the match is equal uh, one to one and a half each well now it's two each but uh, yeah this exact same position was already on the board uh, I will put a link to that game in the description below if you want to check that out as well as like I said uh, this is move 20 the Sp the Petros and Spassky game ended in like 43 moves so like 23 more moves were played from this position uh, but yeah here Fischer didn't really didn't really try all that much, like we said, uh, he did uh, catch a cold and perhaps he was not feeling uh, all that well and he simply repeated a game that was already played. Uh, for some reason, uh, I don't really know why uh, Petrosen allowed this, I'm sure it's, it's his own game of course, he, he knew this game. Uh, but why would he allow it uh, like to be played out in, in its entirety? So this is uh, one very interesting uh, thing. If anyone knows the answer to this question, uh, feel free to you know increase our, our vast knowledge in the description below. Uh, if not, I will try to research it a bit more and perhaps uh, you know inform all of you on on why would Petrosen allow such a thing, especially with the white pieces. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Rich Pargolin, Nick Crystalis, uh, Danny McCullough, Michael Alberico and Jose Santos for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon, uh, perhaps with game 5 of the match or w with some of your suggestions. I've seen uh, Lila Chess Zero played a very nice game in the Evans Gambit, so perhaps uh, maybe show that and then continue the series. We'll see how it goes. So, uh, thank you all and I'll see you soon.